Hey, welcome to Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy. Today, I have two of the most iconic single malt whiskeys in the entire world, the Glenlivet 12 and the Glenfiddich 12. You see these ones everywhere. They have a few similarities, but I'll tell you which one I prefer when I nose them, taste them, and give them a mark. So two of the most popular single malt whiskeys in the entire world. When you look at a bar, you probably see at least one of these bottles up there, maybe with some Johnny Walker, but these two are the staples of Scotch single malt whiskey. Um, let's start right here with the Glenlivet 12. Um, this one is, they say they use traditional oak and American oak um, in the casks. Now I always thought that traditional oak meant American oak. Could be wrong, um, I'm not really 100% sure. There could be some sherry influence in here. Let's see how this is on the nose. So right away, floral notes, perfume kind of like essence to this. It's very light, very approachable. Get a little butterscotch in there. Definitely some malty notes as well. But as far as like substance, depth, a little bit lacking I'd say. It's very, very basic on the nose for sure. Nothing really off-putting. Maybe like a tad youthful, but it smells like whiskey. If you give this to someone, you're like what does it smell like? It smells like scotch. Let's go palette. So again, not much going on. You get a little bit of citrus, some vanilla, that multi note comes back, some oakiness. Get kind of like a creamy kind of vanilla on the finish. But again, pretty simple. Um, not much is going on here. It's a basic scotch whiskey. Um, I'd say this one probably uses second, third, fourth fill casks. Um, you're not getting that much cask influence in it. As far as the oak's concerned, I'm not sure I'm picking up that much sherry. If there is sherry whiskey in here, it's very, very minimal. Um, you mostly get that ex-bourbon, those like sweet notes. You know, that butterscotch, that vanilla. But overall, um, you know, not too interesting. Pretty basic, underwhelming. You know, this is a highly produced whiskey. You know, both of these are super highly produced. Um, like I said, probably using casts that have been used over and over and over again. Um, score wise for me on this one, I'm gonna give it 69 out of 100. For value, I paid. $26.99 US dollars for this. Um, at that price, there's some other whiskeys kind of in the market that I think are better. Um, I'll get into that later. But for right now, I'm gonna subtract two points for value, bring this down to 67 out of 100. Let's try the Glenfiddich 12. So this one uses American ex-bourbon cask and Spanish sherry casks. Let's see how it is on the nose. So again, very approachable nose, very light as far as the aromas are coming out of this. Definitely get some fruit notes here, underripe pear definitely comes out. Get some malty notes. There's a very faint sherry note. You can kind of pick up just a little bit of sherry in here. Maybe just a touch of chocolate as well. So far I prefer this nose to the Glenlivet. Let's go palette. Bitter chocolate. You get a huge amount of bitter chocolate on this one. From the palate to the finish, it lingers that whole time. Get a little bit of pear, maltiness again, and some vanilla on here. But again, that finish, I mean, it's, it's short. Um, it doesn't drag on for very long. It's not very complicated whiskey. It's very, very basic yet again. These ones, you know, if I had a guess, I'd say third fill casks, some second fill casks. Whiskey that's been processed, you know, these things are in huge production. Like, I'm not sure the numbers on these. If I can figure it out, I'll throw it up in a graphic. But I mean, they produce just so much, so much whiskey. And as you can really tell, this stuff is just very, very basic. Very basic. 
Um, not much going on, no complexity really at all. Some couple flavors here and there. I call these ones, uh, if you have to, whiskeys. Like if you're out somewhere, you're at a wedding, the only thing they have on their shelf for a decent whiskey is something like this. So, you, you know, you deal with it. Um, just not something a whiskey lover is going to go back to. You know, you, this, these whiskeys have their time and their place, right? You try these out when you're young, um, you're first getting into scotch, perhaps, you know, it's one of the ones you try first just because it's least expensive. It's really highly available, but once you start trying some, some other whiskeys, you find out that, you know, these are really, really low on the scale as far as um, something you're looking for as like a connoisseur of whiskey. Score-wise for me on this one, I liked it more than the Glenlivet. I think that bitter chocolate note is decent. You do get some okay sherry notes, like one, <laughs> one decent chocolate note I like on it. But again, underwhelming for sure on this one. I'm going to give it 72 out of 100. And for value, I paid, again, $26.99 US dollars for this. There's other whiskeys available in that price range that are much better in my opinion. I'm taking off, I can take off a point and a half. So not quite two points because I did like this one better, higher score, so I think the price maybe is a little bit more justified, but I'm still taking off a point and a half. I'm gonna bring it down to 70.5 out of 100. Let's just take a second, I'm gonna compare these head to head, see what the main differences are. These are both bottled at 40% ABV, and I think you can really kind of tell on the mouthfeel of these there's really not that much viscosity whatsoever. It's very thin on the palate. Um, so the, I guess the main differences would be the Glenlivet, you're getting a little more fruit notes, a little more uh, vibrant kind of floral to it. That does kind of speak to that American ex-bourbon kind of cask. You kind of do get that sometimes with those casks. Whereas the Glenfiddich with those sherry casks from Spain, you are picking up that like that chocolate note, that bitter chocolate note, which I think is decent in here. Um, as far as like finish, length, they're almost the, kind of the same. They kind of, the finish kind of lasts. It's very kind of short with both of these. Like I said, the mouthfeel is kind of thin. The viscosity is very low, but that kind of speaks to this whiskey. I mean, it's like I said, mass produced, um, chill filtered. So you're not really gonna get that whiskey profile that you'd maybe get and like a more sought after uh, single malt whiskey. But this whiskey is not really intended for that. You know, it's mass produced. It's for someone who's maybe getting into whiskey for the first time. It's for someone who wants to drink it just on a rocks and not really pick out flavors. It's not for the connoisseur of whiskey, obviously. Um, I really think that Glenlivet, uh, Glenfiddich really get decent at 18 years old. I think 12 years old for these, they really uh, drink younger than they seem. Um, I've had some 12 year old whiskey that just tastes way older than these things. These taste youthful for sure. I think that goes to speak to like the maturation and uh, what kind of cast they're using to mature it with, but definitely drinks younger than it is. Um, so yeah, 18 years old. I think the, the Glenlivet 18, the Glenfiddich 18, both decent whiskeys. So I th sometimes the 15 year old in the range is okay, but I think you kind of got to get to that 18 year age statement before these two distilleries provide something that's like, you know, something of substance that it's actually gonna receive a good mark for me anyway. That's my personal opinion. Let's talk value with these. Like I said, I paid $26.99 US for the bottles. Um, you can probably find them for around that price range in your area, depending where you are. I know Costco probably has these on for super cheap. Um, you know, specials, sale prices here and there. You can probably find these for even less money than that maybe a little bit more in your area, but it all kind of depends. Um, but I think for this price range, there's just other whiskeys that are so much better. They're gonna give you more complex flavors, a better profile. Um, you know, even if you wanna go to like a blended scotch, uh, Monkey Shoulder comes to mind. Uh, Johnny Walker Black is right in this price range as well. So I don't know why you would ever purchase these when there's just so much other whiskey out there and then bourbon. You're gonna get a lot of good bourbon for you know the high 20s, low 30 dollars in the states for sure. Um, yeah, it's 12 year old single malt scotch, but so what if it's 12 years old? Like I said, it doesn't taste like a 12 year old whiskey, um, and just because it's a single malt doesn't mean it's better than a blend. So I think for value, these things are overpriced here in Ontario. They want 60 dollars Canadian for a bottle of this uh, each, 
just absolutely out of control, expensive. Um, I don't know why you'd ever, ever spend the money for that. Just crazy. Um, but you know, this whiskey, it is what it is. Um, is it meant to be drank by someone who considers himself, you know, a whiskey enthusiast? Maybe at the beginning, you know, this is maybe like one of your gateway whiskeys into other things. But once you've had it, you get by it, you're not gonna go back because there's just so much out there that's far superior in my opinion. Um, but this is maybe meant for somebody who's gonna throw it on ice, not really think about it, you know, drink it for the ABV and not for the flavor. So I'm gonna see how this is on the rocks. I don't normally drink whiskey on the rocks, but let's just see how this is. And let's see how it is in like a scotch and soda too. So I'm gonna do that, I'll be right back. So this is usually how you'll see this whiskey served. Um, I remember drinking this when I was super young and just being completely turned off to scotch whiskey for a very long time. And I think that's a common thing that happens, you know, a lot of someone will come up to you or come up to me and be like, you oh, I know, I don't like scotch. I was like, well, okay, well, what have you had? Have you had like Glenfiddich 12, Glenlivet 12? Is those the scotches that you're basing all of scotch whiskey on? And I think a lot of times someone, you know, without uh, scotch knowledge, whiskey knowledge experience, um, will try one of these for the first time and be like, nah, I don't like it. Um, so here it is. This is the Fittick. I'm sorry, this is the Glenlivet. Yeah, I mean, the ice just, it just dulls the flavor a bit, takes away a little bit of that alcohol burn. And I mean, the whiskey with, I don't like drinking whiskey with ice. Yeah, I just prefer it without. But you do get, you know, a little bit less harshness. I don't know. I just don't like it very much. Try it with some club soda. I'm not really a scotch and soda guy. Um, I never really drank it. When I used to drink more cocktails before I just started drinking single malt a lot more. Um, never really gone to scotch and soda that much. Let's see how it is. That's not bad. That's actually not bad. Let's try the Fittick. Okay, so there's the purpose for this whiskey. Scotch and soda with these two, pretty decent. Um, I don't mind that at all. I would maybe drink that. So there it is. Um, but an expensive mix mixer, you know? Uh, why spend that much money for a mixing uh, scotch when, um, you know, you can probably get something even half the price that's gonna give you maybe the same kind of result. It's up to you, I guess, um, to each their own. But for me, um, these ones will not be in my bar uh, ever again. <laughs> not that I don't um, want to be a snob or anything, but I think, just think once you move past that in your kind of whiskey journey, uh, you're going to never go back. Anyway, uh, let me know what you think. Glenlivet 12, Glenfiddich 12, where do they rank for you? Were they something you tried earlier on in your uh, scotch journey? Um, do you like the scotch and soda? You drink it on the rocks? Let me know in the, in the comments down below. Uh, if you like the channel, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. Lots of good things coming up. So as always, have a good one. Cheers.